spells of sunshine. But just look at that feed, that moisture. Thank you very much. See you later on. Now, the rollout of the COVID vaccine has given fraudsters another opportunity to target vulnerable people. Warnings are being issued about scams in which criminals offer jabs in return for money. In one case, a pensioner in London paid £160 to a man pretending to be a health worker. Breakfast, Jamie Coven has this report. Moments before this image was captured, this man injected a 92-year-old with a fake COVID vaccine. He'd claimed to be from the NHS. And then administered um, a jab in the arm from what has been described like a, a dart-like instrument. Charged £160, took the money from the lady, um, and then uh, and it disappeared. And just to add insult to that injury, then reattended several days later to try to solicit an extra £100. So this is, has been a horrendous experience for the victim. It's not known what was injected into the pensioner, but a hospital check found her unharmed. This is an absolute disgusting crime. It is utterly unacceptable assault uh, and fraud, um, and it will not be tolerated. Um, we will do everything we can to try to track down uh, and catch this person before they carry out this offence on anyone else. It's thought over £22 million has been lost to COVID-related scams. These images show a makeshift laboratory set up in a kitchen in West Sussex. Fake COVID cures had been made and sold to people in America and France. But Frank Ludlow was caught in his local post office as he tried to send more. He was convicted in July. How significant a problem is this? I mean, how many fraudsters are there kind of trying to cash in on the crisis? I mean, it's extensive. So just since the first lockdown in March, uh, we've had about half a million people um, come to us for advice online. Uh, we've doubled since October the number of people coming direct to us for, uh, for advice on the phone. And it's, it's not just a small group. I mean, one in three people from our research um, have been targeted by some form of COVID-related scam since the pandemic began. Today, police advise that no one from official vaccination programmes will ever turn up unannounced. They will never ask for bank details and no one will ever be charged for the vaccine. But with the vaccination programme rolling out across the country, today there is a warning. Beware the criminals trying to exploit those who desperately want protection from the deadly virus. Jay McCubbin, BBC News. Well, we're joined now by the lead officer of the Chartered Trading Standards Institute, Catherine Hart. And Catherine, I know you've been tra tracking all kinds of scams during this pandemic, but that particular one about the 92-year-old who was given this fake vaccine is absolutely shocking, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, I've seen so many different instances of, the, of criminals using this pandemic as a platform to defraud us. But this is absolutely shocking. It's despicable that somebody can actually do that to, to anybody. Because we've known about the possibility of fake text messages. And I noticed on WhatsApp groups it was being shared, people saying, you know, look out for this. That's something we've seen before. But someone going up, knocking on a door, saying, I can give you this vaccine, you'll be reimbursed by the NHS. Was that anything that you had prepared for in your organisation or seen anything like previously? Well, unfortunately, since the beginning of, of the pandemic, we have seen so many different lines of the, this sort of thing. So we've had people knocking on the door or selling testing kits over the phone or offering vaccinations or um, that sort of thing. It's just it's supposed to be constant. Even right at the very beginning, we were, we were hearing about rogue traders offering to disinfect driveways and doorbells. So it's it's just it's ongoing every single time that there seems to be an opportunity that the, the criminals are on there trying to exploit that. It's really important, isn't it, Catherine? That, that, I mean, it's often uh, in the case of this latest scam, I, I think that the lady who was involved was in her 90s, 92 year old woman. I mean, it's often the case that they, they target vulnerable people. But what are the golden rules of, of trying to avoid the scam? I mean, some of them are more familiar with, you know, the sort of online scams, the HMRCs, things like that. What are the golden rules of, of, of trying to make sure you are not going to be victim of a scam? Well, first, first of all, if it comes out of the blue, be suspicious. Always take five minutes, you know, have a look at what they're actually asking you to do. 
because a lot of these links are actually what they're wanting is your personal details to harvest your information or your bank details so they're able to actually exploit you financially. Um, it's really important that we actually speak out about it and share this, speaking to neighbours, speak up, putting messages on social media, ask and asking the people who know about it. But we as enforcement agencies actually need that information as well. We need that intelligence so we're able to actually work with our partners to try and stop it. I tell you, one of the things that often occurs to me, Catherine, is that uh, given that often people are targeted who are vulnerable, in terms of people coming to your door, for example, and I know, yeah. I, I understand that there are people sort of pretending to be COVID marshals and maybe they're wearing yes. high-vis vests. You know, there's a, little, there's a little bit of fakery around that. Now, one of the things that people are often reluctant to do is just say no and shut the door, you know, that you don't have to engage. And part of the problem is, before you know it, you're in a conversation and you've already started to divulge information. I think we've got to be very cautious about this time anyway, because we don't want people coming to our door willy nilly. We don't want strangers. So I think we've actually got to be on our, on our guards and don't engage. We've got to be strong. It's like we're, we're kings of our castles. We can, we, we, we can be strong enough to say no. Um, if anybody knocks on our door out of the blue, go and find out about them. Close the door. Um, we at Trading Standards would always say never engage with, with any traders at the door. So particularly when it comes down to people sort of saying that they got the vaccine or they're from the NHS, check. Be suspicious and check. And some of the websites that these scams send you to can look really genuine, so be very careful about that. But as we mentioned, not just testing and vaccines, Catherine, but you've seen scams involving uh, puppies, uh, romance, Netflix, some of the big streaming services. Tell us more about that. Well, unfortunately, again, these criminals are ex exploiting the situation that we're in at the moment. So a lot of it is lockdown loneliness. People are bored, we're working from home. So people are looking for some sort of opportunity to, to make their lives better. So things like the romance scams, for example, you know, pe people are wanting companionship or one way or another. So they're likely to engage with somebody that they perhaps wouldn't do normally. Puppy scams. Now, I'm the lead officer and I nearly fell for a puppy scam because I was, you know, I've been looking for a puppy for over a year um, and all of a sudden I I'm sort of clicking on things like that. I've got a bit more time these days, so I'm clicking away. I end up engaging with somebody that's potentially a scammer. Thankfully for me, several texts in, I realised he was a scammer, but that's me, you know, it could happen to anybody. So the whole thing about sort of the scams at this, at this moment in time is that we're all vulnerable. It used to be stereotypes of, of elderly, vulnerable people, we, we would say. But actually, I'm vulnerable, you're vulnerable, everybody's vulnerable at this moment in time. Well, Catherine, I just, can, can I, do you mind if I ask just your, your own situation you talked about there? Now, a lot of people are thinking, OK, so there you go, you're, you're from the Chartered Tra Trading Standards Institute. That yeah. happens to you. Can you just, do you mind detailing? I mean, when you realised it was a scam and you're involved in some kind of communication, did you call it out? And, uh, I mean, what, what's happened since that moment in time to the person you believe was trying to scam you? Well, this particular scammer, it turns out it was he was based in Cameroon, although I didn't realise that at the time. Um, basically, I responded to an advert. We engaged, he was showing me lovely stock photographs, I didn't know that at the time either, of this wonderful little puppy called Sophie. And he sent me videos. In fact, straight away, really, I, I just realised that there was something not quite right. But because he's a scammer, he got confused about his own story. So first of all, he told me he lived in Newcastle. Then he told me he lived in South Wales. Then he told me he lived in Newcastle, uh, South Wales, Newcastle. And then he then said that he lived in, uh, in um, Australia. So all of those things. However, you know, I was looking, I started to realise straight away. But every time, he, if I was to question him, he was able to give me a plausible story of, 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 the situation or why he was actually in you know t telling me these things so it was it was quite funny and it was almost like the mo of a romance scammer anyway because every time he, he sent me a text he'd send me a little kiss as well so i thought this isn't this is a bit weird 
Well, it's really interesting, uh, Catherine, hearing that, you know, your personal experience as well as your, wide, your wider advice, uh, people can get caught out. Just we've got to be careful. Uh, Catherine Hart is the lead officer from the Chartered Trading Standards Institute. Thank you. A friend of mine Thank was you. scammed out of several hundred pounds buying a new horse. Exactly similar situation via Facebook as well. And she would be someone who would be very careful about due diligence in a situation like that. So it can, as she says, really happen to anyone. Be careful. Right, stay with us. Mike coming up with the sport shortly.